Thank you. Thank you. First off, I did bring a suit. And I packed it very carefully, but I got so excited talking about doomsday that I forgot to go up and get it. So you'll have to forgive my, in, my California informality. Um, I'm really glad to be here. I'm a, and glad to be asked to be part of the bulletin uh, and the work that uh, is heroic and is profoundly important, although very little appreciated among the great bulk of the population. Uh, because the subject matter is not too well understood. The risk of nuclear weaponry, uh, climate change is coming into its own with greater awareness, uh, but compared to the threats, the awareness level is not all that high. So uh, there's a lot to, a lot to be uh, done here. And I will say the reason I'm in, so involved here is I um, was going to my wife's uh, reunion at Stanford and I didn't want to go to all the activities, so I decided to call my old friend Bill Perry, who I'd known when I was governor the first time. So I went to see him, and I wanted to talk to him. I said, you know, they're, they're all calling names of Putin, and he, doesn't he have a lot of nuclear weapons? So don't we have to be a little more careful? And he paused, and he went up and got his book that was in draft, My Journey <clears throat> at the Nuclear Brink. And then we discussed it for the next several hours, and that really got me... Um, working even harder on this whole topic. And the book uh, that he wrote, very interesting. Uh, uh, I called up the New York Times. I said, are you going to review Bill Perry's book? It's very important. And he said, well, we never got a copy. This is what the editor of the New York Times, the book review, that's, I said, well, I'll send you one. He said, no, we don't, we don't review books after the publication date. So that was the New York Times. Uh, so I called up Bob Silver, the editor of the New York Review of Books. I said, Bob, you've got to review this. He said, no, you review it. I said, well, how many words? He said, 3,500. I said, OK. And I did. If you want to read it, it's in the New York Review of Books. You can get it online. Um, it's, called, it's called the Stark Warning. I don't normally do things like that, but I had no choice. Um, Bill Perry is really an extraordinary human being. Uh, he's getting up there. You know, he's 91. I don't know when he's going to be 92, but he's, he's getting old. He travels all over the place. He goes to Europe. Uh, and he went to Russia, went to uh, Korea, Japan. He is a total missionary to confront this danger uh, that so threatens humanity. He is really working. I don't know of anyone else. And he talks so clearly so plainly and so humanly. Uh, matter of fact, I was going around my office last year as governor. I kept talking. I said, it's over, guys. The doom. It's uh, two minutes to midnight. And so people in my office said, you're talking to Perry too much. <laughs> we got to get you to talk to somebody else. So they got me on the phone with some, uh, a very prominent uh, individual. I won't tell you his name. Everybody knows who he is. So I called this guy up and I said, I ran through Perry's scenarios. Um, you know, nuclear blunder, a mistake, Russia and America could start something. Uh, India, Pakistan, um, nuclear materials getting in the hands of a terrorist, coming, blowing up Washington, totally ending America as a democratic government. Um, he said, no, he went over, went over each one that Perry keeps talking about. And this guy said, don't worry, India, civilian control of nuclear, no problem. Pakistan's the military, they know how to control it. Nuclear materials, we got that covered too. So I went back home, I went back to my phone, and I called Bill Perry, I said, Bill, so and so is not worried. Bill Perry said, Perry is worried. <laughs> so that's the way it is, folks. And the issue is there, and how do you deal with something so ominous, so all-encompassing, without, you know, without bringing everybody down. You know, how do you get, how do you deal with it? I don't know. But he deals with it in a very effective way, very convincing, very persuasive. And this bu uh, bulletin of atomic scientists is part of that larger undertaking of waking ourselves up, waking other people up, and never being discouraged 
or slow down because of the daunting nature of our task. And now you've added climate change and now it's cyber and disruption and bio. Boy, I heard more damn problems today. But you know what? I don't get discouraged. The worse it is, the more excited I am. Let's get it done. Let's, let's respond. So that's what Bill Perry's all about. Uh, I'm inspired by him. And he, he couldn't be here, but his granddaughter, Lisa Perry, is here to accept the award for really a truly great American. I can tell you, I've met a lot of great Americans. I met a lot of politicians. I met a lot of famous people. I spent half my life talking to famous people. Bill Perry is one of the most extra, ex, extraordinary, outstanding, and deeply human person with such ethical values and vision and competence and smarts and uh, tireless energy. So I can't think of a better person to honor and to emulate. So Lisa, come up here and get the award of your grandfather. Thank you. Um, throughout my lifetime, my family has attempted to throw several retirement parties for my grandfather. <laughs> they haven't really stuck. <laughs> when he announced to the family his intention of starting a foundation to educate the public on the threat of nuclear weapons, he told us he thought there could be no greater use of his remaining years than to work to ensure that his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren will one day be free from the threat of nuclear catastrophe. For the past several years, I have had the privilege of working directly with my grandfather to help support his vision and have been able to witness firsthand, with great pride, his monumental impact. At 92, he just finished writing a new book on presidential power and nuclear weapons, a topic which seems to have had quite a resurgence in interest lately for some reason. He has also joined me to co-host a new podcast entitled At the Brink, working to make nuclear issues a personal issue and reaching out to upcoming generations to give them the knowledge and inspiration to take up this critical fight. Both of these are set to come out next year and he has no intention of stopping. His only concession to his age has been to cut back on outside commitments, like boards and foundations. But the one commitment he is determined to maintain is as chairman of the board of sponsors for the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. That is because he is keenly appreciative of the vital role played by the bulletin in the very mission he has taken on to sound the alarm on existential threats, to educate the public, and to act as a reliable voice of reason amid an increasingly confusing public dialogue. We in the Perry Project know that we would not be able to do what we do without the support of the bulletin and the expertise it brings to these issues. My grandfather asked that I read his statement today here for you in lieu of his attendance, and he regrets that he couldn't make it out here today. I am, the, I am a child of the Cold War. I lived through every Cold War crisis and deeply participated in the most dangerous of these, the Cuban Missile Crisis, where odds were about even that this crisis would get out of control and destroy civilization. I can remem remember the enormous relief I felt when the Cold War ended, and I have always believed that we avoided a nuclear catastrophe more by good luck than by good management. So it is beyond my comprehension that we have decided to roll the dice again on a second Cold War. I can only believe that we are doing this because most of our citizens simply do not understand that the danger of a nuclear catastrophe today is equal to the darkest days of the Cold War. That danger is, of course, reflected in the 2019 setting of the Doomsday Clock. 
So I believe that a serious information campaign is imperative, and I have devoted the remainder of my life to this cause. I have taught classes and give, given countless lectures on these nu nuclear dangers. And the most important consequence of my Stanford classes was that it led to the nuclear education of Ted Lieu, who has gone from Stanford to the Congress, where he sponsored legislation that, if passed, would make us all safer. And I have written books, papers, and op-eds. The most important consequence of my journey at the nuclear brink was that it was read by Governor Brown, who then became a tireless crusader for the cause, initially by writing a review of the book for the New York Review of Books, which did more to publicize these ideas than the book itself. <laughs> But my generation has failed to contain the nuclear genie that we let out of the bottle. Thus, the continued existence of our civilization depends on the youth. That is why I persuaded some of my children and grandchildren to work with me. And that is why it is entirely appropriate that my granddaughter represents me here tonight. Through all of this, I have understood that one person cannot solve this problem. It takes a village. And the nuclear village is well represented here tonight including the Nuclear Threat Initiative, the Plowshares Fund, and addition to our own Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. I am proud to be associated with all three of these organizations, working tirelessly to stem the tide of existential dangers, without whom I dare not imagine where we would be at today. Thank you very much.